Hey people, this is our Cobra and this is Let's Play Dragon Age Inquisition Blind. So, um, yeah, um, I'd like to retract a complaint I made um, about the easiness of getting back to the world map. Turns out up here in the corner, by side the big red banner, is a black button, very visible, that says world map. So, yeah, um, apologies to the game, I retract all complaints and admit to being a dumbass. I hope that's okay with all of you. And that you can forgive me for being blind as a mole. Not blind as a bat, though. Bats aren't blind. Some moles are blind, though. I suppose that doesn't really matter to you. Anyway, let's get going. We had the message from Red Jenny to follow up on. Plus, of course, that people should be um, responding rather nicely to the jobs I sent them to. Did we finish anything over here? Interestingly, the runes are El Mari in origin, belonging to the tribes that inherited Ferelden almost a thousand years ago. What is of greater interest, however, is that none of the runes translate intelligibly, meaning it is all in code. According to the translators, a reference to the Guardian also indicates an island off the northern coast. Most curious. I'll continue translation efforts and I hope we can narrow this down further. The Elmari runes found in the mountain passage outside Haven have finally given up more of their secrets. According to one of the large islands off the northern coast of Ferelden, the island is quite large and covered in dense wilderness, so certainly it will be an evolved process. According to the runes, however, there should be some connection to the original discipline of Adrasti and the Guardian of the Sacred Ashes. <laughs> Colin's uh, plan is as soon as we show interest in the area, others will follow. So let's go and force and occupy the island. Hmm. Well, this is a repetitive task, but apparently it take quite time. So yeah, Colin, you take everyone there and All right. clean the area. Let's do this. Okay. Let's see, what do we have over here? Joe success and light. Commander Colin, it would be an honor to serve the Inquisition and prove the medal of the Olysian Chevaliers by doing the Maker's work. I accept your generous offer wholeheartedly will arrive in good time for those men loyal to me. It will be my privilege to order the Inquisition troops into holy battle against those who would threaten the order of the Empire. In Maker's grace, Lord Sean Gaspard of Lights. Hmm. Nangil, a hundred shadows to chase, heading to Lake Celestine. The nobility says it's lovely this time of year. Fisher. And there's still a lot to do. Choose your lines. A fragment of Ben Hassel information report. With Shan Kaspar removed from play, Carlina or Monet will almost certainly be the next Duchess of Lights. The struggle intensified Carlina has sent agents to cause a scandal, judging that Monet does not have the skill to avoid such snares. Monet is relied upon Mother Renette, her mentor, with Chandra for advice upon how to stream her claim to the Duchy. And the revered mother, in an attempt to protect Monet, has sent mercenaries to threaten Carolina's life. Carolina as Duchess. Right. But it isn't fair that Carolina ruins Monette for that. Monette didn't send mercenaries. Mm. It was her. Um... Yep. On the other hand, Carol. Let's see. Carolina is an agent. Carolina sounds like the more able leader, but then she pulls something like this. I don't think it'll be fair to let them when they take the fall. Oop da ba dee ba dee.
You know what? But sending mercenaries to end an hour's life because of that. Then again, it wasn't uh, Monette herself who did it. You know, let's not reward such disgusting behavior as rumor mongering and such. Let's see what we have. If she wants to play like that, then she can read what she sows. I'd rather have the good-hearted but inexperienced than the experienced but, you know, disgusting. Except from Rector's report. Do you know this sign? A triangle point down two wavy lines through it? A lookout spotted in Chong on a ruined wall close to one of our outposts. A cursor inquiry into the symbol has revealed nothing. Aquist is still looking. Arjun thinks she saw the symbol or something where it like it's scrawled in a ledger that belongs to the Comtesse de Bayard. A sweep was done, as you ordered. Almost every outpost of ours has been marked in this manner. Many believe we're being watched. To an end, we do not know. This is on another mission. I can follow up on the artist's lead. The Comtesse Bayard is reclusive and has remained steadfastly neutral in all matters, but I'm assuming I can find a way to gain a cooperation. What about a decoy outpost set up near a trade route and watch carefully? If someone decides to take out their piece of chalk, we'll have them. That does sound like a bad opportunity, but she can't do anything about it now. Negotiation uh, is in infancy. Building an organization to do this is like building an army. You need soldiers, weapons, arms, and food to beat them, and that's just the beginning. I don't know it could make a difference. I have great war treaties. And will this allow us to take what's needed when needed? We do not face a blight, but should a torn sky of is my concern. Consider, this could work. The blight is but ten years past, and each remember how we were saved. I could use the treaties to leverage the good below the water to use it for the Inquisition. Sure. There, yeah, now, everyone has something to do. In the meantime, I will be... going back uh, to Valroyo, I think. To investigate the whole red Jenny thing. How did you know what? I'll just off-screen that. Here we are, and I brought these companions along. Because I felt that, you know, they're probably the most well adjusted when it comes to city life. It's all well and good for you. You have people to fight for you. I do. My grandfather did much to ensure we would weather these hiccups. Hiccups? The divine's dead and we're at war. You'll be at war. I'll be home. It's coming home. You'll see. Yeah, you can't exactly hide from these kind of events. Oh, it just sounds so common in your accent. I don't have an accent. The same rock that flattened your nose to make those sounds must have also addled your hearing. Naked. Right, well, blow it out your arse. <laughs> Something red. Like that. Should be something to read. Well, there's something to read. Not of heroes, Mephirath and Sacrifice. And trust the old lady, the sword and the fire against the winter. Betrayed to the Empire in exchange for kingdom. Mephirath, now synonymous with treachery. But would Andrast have won? If not, what would we have lost? Let's look not just at the act, but at the why of it. As the armies of Thave pierced the Imperial homeland, which revealed not as a wave, but as an arrow. And as any hunter will attest, if your aim is not true, there is no returning to the bow. We must consider. How much of Our Lady's victory to this point was against tr true Imperium, and how much was against the echoes of Empire? And Druste, the inspiration, may not have considered such. But Mafra, the general, fought for such. Or fought for homeland, not vision. Was it victory or defeat that his betrayal held at bay? Mafra made the deal that killed the Lady. That is fact. And when Druste died, Mafra was gifted everything from the southern plain south. How generous and impossible to hold, this must have seemed. Let's look on Mafra and the legacy he divided. 
among his sons, not but an eye for accusation, but from a tactical consideration. For he must have known that mere rivals had never stopped to win them. What if he set about creating peers, and not none of this was an accident? How then fared Isareth, Iberian, and Verot? Except from a history not of heroes, reading in the Ocken Heart of Change, collected by Philium Abad. An intriguing thought. Something red. Wait a moment. Yeah. Red handkerchief. A different symbol script on the back of a stable report, marked with red paint. Thank you for, for helping good Lady Chaos. Some of those who asked about Harold enter Third Passage. Could not stay to see if he makes it. Oh, head. I can read the head. The head of Madame Snip Snappy Snips. What? Mascot of Le Masque du Lyon, named in jest but generally respected. The Grand Man, as she is also called, was the last dragon brought down by Sir Koenig, the previous owner of the cafe. A spirit hunter, Koenig came of age in the years following the sighting that named the era. While others were quick to assume the tales of ancient Navarran dragon hunters must have been exaggerated, he tracked the gradual increase in dragon numbers and size. Koenig believed we had yet to see a true return of the beast of Laden and that the space men's days were young despite their ferocity. It is a cruel victory, but today we know Sir Koenig to have been correct, even as he may have fallen to his own expertise. He is, was, years overdue from his last hunt, and for the best rest of us, twelve wary. While we thought to be the pinnacle of Dragon's Triumph may have been close to adolescence, the sisters of Madame Snappy Snaps have may have left their siblings far behind. Excellent tour from a disposable walking tour of the capital by Philium Abad. Oh, yeah, there's just plaques and stuff all over town. The Mass du Leon. We cheered when honor was her might, but many more deserve a thought. For though she was the first a knight, and her kin and kite have always fought. For plague with a dedication Le Mas du Leon, sponsored by Princess Corinne's first cavalerie. Here, for those who stood beside. Interesting. This way? Yeah. Reservoir stocking relation. Tremors, floating, taste is off, water birds die off. Restocking failed, fish not fit, do not consume. Aha, you're the something red. Not a red fish, but a red handkerchief. A red handkerchief floated around a key with a small hasty scroll. Key lifted from drunk swearing about heralds. Don't know what door. I'm out. My death is paid. Oh, yes. What have I gotten myself into this time? Miro de la Mia was caught from Valroyeux in 849 Blessed. It was the will of the mad Emperor Reville who demanded a reflecting pool large enough to draw his main deceased mother back across the veil. Many shops and vendors were evicted to make room for his folly, and several memorials to the heroes of the first four blights were simply toppled. The rest of supports little in the way of life as the bottom was lined with lead to increase its reflective properties. The will intended for divination, using both as massive planchettes, but work was not finished until the week of his own death. The water see little used today, save for lazy or fornication, sojourns by the nobility outboard decorative gondolas. Yikes. Search the upper market. Hmm, there seems to be some stairs around. If the map changed with the elevation. Yeah, well, there's something up there, but I'm not getting up this way, obviously. Now, this is the market, so getting up will probably take me to the upper market, so that must mean. Down there. That looks more plausible. Or maybe this will. Let's see. Nah. I think this is the right way. 
Oops. Jenny. Maybe Red Jenny is more than one person. I remember. Interesting. I look forward to meeting this. Don't you think we are obligated to help the Inquisition if we can? We can barely stay afloat amid all this chaos. Our obligations lie with our families. As I see it, the Inquisition is trying to end the chaos. Who else is doing that? <laughs> it's yet to be proven just what they're up to. Well, you could take a look at the hinterlands, although that is kind of far away from here. Guess news travels slow. The summer home of Messia Glops, a plague reads, a seasonal home for the childhood head of the twin sons of Empress Yvette. The nature of Messia Glops remains unknown, save that he was a gift from a Rivani ambassador, who was eventually released to the sea after taking the hand of a sluggish page. Maybe a shark? Just jump over there, I guess. I'm kind of curious how to how you're supposed to get up here, like without 